Good morning, everyone. This is Shaila. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Shaila. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> morning, Judy. Or afternoon. Good afternoon, yes. No, I'm yeah, talking morning. Afternoon. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is Trish. Hi, Trish. Good afternoon. This is Marie Claude from Paris. Hello, Marie Claude. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, maybe each um, of the core group <coughs> would um, uh, just do a, a kind of a brief introduction to themselves and then uh, we can move on. And, and just to ask everybody to mute unless you're speaking, please, so you can cut down the background noise. So I don't know. Um, Ula, do you want to start? Yeah, I don't mind. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome. It's a big pleasure to see you all here. My name is Ula Elisabeth Matson, and I am a core member of the um, European and North America core group. And I have been nominated by Soptimist International. I'm also have the honor to be a member of the steering committee of Women for Water Partnership. Thank you. Daniela. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Some of you are the first time attendees, and I would like to introduce some of our attendees today from the official delegation of Canada, Amrita Chavan, and I don't see the others, I apologize. Um, I am a core group member, National Council of Women of Canada, and I, I welcome you all. That is all to say, please bring your issues forward. Bring your, bring your concerns forward. Let's, let's work together and let's make this CSW memorable. Just like the one we made last year. Let's give much. a little more. Thank you for attending. Nina. Uh, I'm sorry, can I just say one thing that is important I forgot? I am the current SE uh, advocacy advisor, one of them. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Nina. Uh, Nina. Good morning, everyone from Los Angeles. Good afternoon to everyone everywhere else. Um, I am also part of the core group for North America and Europe. My name is Nina Smart, nominated by Soar Optimist International. I'm also the founding member of my organization, SWF International, that works to end FGM, and a founding member of the Los Angeles Task Force to end FGM. I welcome everyone, and uh, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Um, Trish. Uh, I'm Trish Masnuk, the other uh, core group member from Canada. Uh, uh, and I'm here on behalf of the Institute for International Women's Rights. Um, I welcome you all, and I'm glad to see such a, a large turnout of, uh, of uh, caucus members. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Trisha. Our other uh, core group members are Mary Collins from the European Women's Lobby, who's not here and Lucy Chikawera, who's also probably on, on another event. As we all know, it's just like mad, madly hopping, isn't it, from one event to another. So thank and, and my name is Zarin Hainsworth, and I'm from the UK, so um, one of the three European members of the core group. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody, and welcome. Um, I think that we had thought that we, we wanted really to um, have a very brief update on uh, things that are going on, but also really to hear kind of your concerns and issues, you know, if there's anything that you would like uh, to, that we should be doing as a, as a caucus, are there any issues that we need to be, to, to raise? Um, I think most people have probably been, maybe some of you have been to the town hall meeting just now and have been to the various um, NGO New York, um, NGOC for New York briefings. Um, but is there anybody who would, um, you know, if you want to raise your hands, if there's any kind of questions you have about the progress of CSW so far and the 
the agreed conclusions, anything else you want to raise? Okay, so um, Linda, I'm, pardon me, I'm not uh, uh, sure. Sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. one half has, there's two that have hands up. Yes, I know, but I wasn't quite sure if Padmina had a hand up or whether she was um, <laughs> simulating something. Oh, well, I did have my hand up. Yeah, first of all, um, I just wanted to say, can I speak now, Madam Chair? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, first of all, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Dr. Padmini Murthy Mini, and uh, I am the public delegate of the United States delegation to the CSW. And um, uh, let me tell you that... Uh, as uh, one of the public delegates here today, I don't know if Eleanor is on, we are uh, attending several things and uh, making notes and bringing them back when we speak to all uh, the State Department and colleagues. And also Zarin, I just wanted to say thank you so much for sharing um, that yesterday about your son and the Ukraine website, which I think a lot of us shared with everybody. Mm, so I think even though we are virtual and uh, some of us are trying to get into the UN, and uh, I think we can really work together. And one of the big things we really need to mm, talk about how make our voice heard is, I guess I'm putting on my health hat as how the climate change is really affecting the health um, and well-being of women, including the sexual um, and reproductive health. And also there's an increased incidence of um, chronic diseases. And I'm not even talking about the infectious disease so I just wanted to say that and thank you all so much. I look forward to interacting with you um, during the next week, uh, two weeks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Back to you. Thank you so much. Um, Linda. Yeah, just quickly, because I have to leave it a couple of minutes to chair something else. Um, in a conversation with our government delegation earlier, um, we were talking about the problems of any statement being made regarding the situation in the Ukraine. And what I feel quite strongly about is that a statement, I, I sorry, I should say, I'm a provider of frontline services to women involved in trafficking in the context of the sex trade and other women you know, who are vulnerable to that. And I'm on, in touch with a lot of people on the ground, as I've said in other meetings, in, in all of the areas surrounding um, the Ukraine, including Russia. And I think what's really important is that we should be making a statement not a statement condemning Russia, but a statement of solidarity with the women of the Ukraine and a really strong commitment that all countries will work together for the rebuilding and flourishing of those women and girls. And I can't see how that can be contentious because the reality is we at the Commission on, the, I mean, the Commission on the Status of Women, both the delegates who are formerly there for our governments and we, who they represent, all want something positive to move forward. And we want to ensure that all of those responses are not putting women at risk of being trafficked and not putting women at risk of being sexually abused, you know, in any way, shape or form. So I can't see that there should be a problem to encouraging our governments to create a statement of solidarity for the moving forward of the women and girls in the Ukraine. And I just wanted to say that very quickly because I have to run somewhere else and I'm trusting it's going to be recorded or somebody will report back what's been said. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Uh, Judy, Judy Dixon. Judy, do you want to unmute? Sorry, I wasn't at the briefing. I wondered if we could get an update on the agreed conclusions. Um, well, I can, uh, uh, Pat Black, you're here, aren't you, Pat Black? Pat? Yep. Do you I'm want here. to give an update? Just very quickly, the um, discussions on the agreed conclusions are starting again in their formal session um, this uh, afternoon in New York. And um, the facilitator has... Uh, issued uh, a document called Rev 1, the first version of which was issued on the 11th of March. And she has now updated that, tidied it up basically in terms of editing it. Um, 
on the 15th of March, and, and that is what will be discussed during the course of, of today's sessions. Um, I can't say much more than that because uh, we have to wait and see what happens in terms of, of what is said in the room during the course of, of today. We would probably have uh, much more information about the positions of, of various member states next week. Um, there, are, there have been background discussions going on and like-minded countries have been talking to each other. Um, and some of the text, but very little of it, has been agreed and is available, is shown in, in Rev 1 uh, of the 11th of March. But um, there is still a long, long way to go and still a lot of uh, text which is to be discussed. Will that help? Thank you very much, Pat. And also, as you can imagine, there's the usual backwards and forwards between countries on particular kind of issues. So, um, uh, you know, definition of woman, for example, and uh, how to you when to insert the word girls and so forth. And um, one of the difficulties that uh, member states have with girls is because they don't want to include girls everywhere because some member states are of the view that that different different things pertain to girls and their ability to make their own decisions or whether they need guidance from parents and that kind of thing and so there's kind of backwards and forwards about that between member states but as as you're aware different member states are lobbying with like-minded groups so you've got one group is called the the mountain states which is um a, a kind of uh, forward-looking states but who gather together so that includes Iceland, Finland, New Zealand, Switzerland, various other states. And then you've got Canada. another and then you've got another group, Canada, yeah. Then you've got another group who are, I think there's others as well, those are the only ones that I can remember. But um, then you have another group which is just called like-minded. Um, so there are these informal groupings that take place. And then of course you've got, you know, the G77 and, and the, the normal um, groupings that there, that there are. Um, Marion, you wanted to say something? Judy, can you take your hand down, please? Unless you wanted to send for me again. Um, follow up question. Can All we right. get a can we get a copy of the latest rev? Um, yeah, I'm sure that we can forward it to you. Yes. So Marion, then Ula, then Daniela, please, Marion. Yes, thanks so much and hi to everybody. Uh, I like to also um, know the first revision. I have a version, but it is uh, already marked by some NGOs with some amendments. And this is my second remark um, on behalf of International Alliance of Women, but also in uh, communication with WILF and others. Uh, we want uh, you to ask to support uh, military and the climate change as something to draft in and to advocacy on, because the military is the biggest um, uh, greenhouse gas um, emission factor. We know this uh, from the production of weapons to the use of weapons, logistic and everything. And you remember that it was taken out in the Paris agreements. There was a little paragraph, but then member states didn't want it. So there are attempts of us to bring language back because we were encouraged by the bureau and other member states who said we want to be ambitious. So please help us <laughs> on this. And I have a question. Um, I heard from the Germans in a briefing that um, there will be an ongoing negotiation with the working methods uh, text because it wasn't so easy and they expected it should be two weeks. Uh, if there are any informations, I would welcome to get informed. Thank you. Okay, so our understanding from the methods of work is that the um, facilitator was uh, unwell. And so they, I know that it was all the kind of member states found that the, the negotiations were much harder than they'd expected. They'd expected it to be easy and to move on. But um, member states who are concerned to have more robust language uh, were, you know, really trying to move things forward. They, they felt that um, they only, this, this resolution is only discussed every few years. And so therefore, it really is an opportunity to move things forward and they, they wanted to, to make the most of it. So a lot of the language about civil society, obviously there hasn't been that much in, but there, there was a revision and it was supposed to be discussed. Um, they, some people felt it was going to be finished on Friday, it wasn't. And it's going to continue virtually, I think on Monday. 
so we can send the latest uh, version, if you like, Ula and then Daniela. Yeah, it, it's perfect, Marion, the question, because I just um, come from the Danish delegates a meeting. We have meetings every day and we just talked about the methods of work. And this is another story now. That is only really one paragraph open. And uh, that is about the uh, participation of the youth. And uh, some countries, um, I will not mention who, but especially one that uh, is against that. So um, yesterday, um, Latvia, uh, Maris, um, invited to a meeting with the EU and South Africa and the other country with, with our, Russia. And they discussed a new um, way of the text. So South Africa will, will come up with that. So hopefully everyone can agree to it. So, so that is the, the absolute latest news. I have that is uh, one hour uh, ago. So I think that that sounds really good. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Sheila. Um, was there anything else you wanted to say? Okay, Daniela. Yeah, with respect to the methods of work, if you look at, um, I forgot which page, but about the last paragraphs, um, those are concerns addressed by the caucus in our statement, and in particular, the National Council of Women of Canada, we have succeeded to ensure our, present in our presence in the decision-making processes as NGOs and achieving virtual space based on the United Nations chapter uh, NGOs participation, which is resolution 1989 um, on point 1996, 31 and 1982, that ensures that we have the right, equal right, however, not unwavering, as member states who are not members of the commission to partake in the processes and as such to remain our space. I think that was a very successful um, negotiation. Uh, another point that I would like to ask my colleagues who have attended the Vienna Cafe, we would like to have some updates on that. For those who are not familiar with the Vienna Cafe, the Vienna Cafe is an idea that began here in this caucus last year, and we took it up to the ambassador of Canada, Bob Ray. And as a result, since last year, now we have an informal space, virtual informal space to negotiate with like-minded states and any other state who wants to have a discussion with us to negotiate uh, the agreed conclusion. So if we could have that, uh, those updates, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. Um, well, I'm sure that um, uh, Huri would be very, maybe would be able to give us an update on that in a, in a bit. Um, nice to hear from um, Carolyn and Nina first though. So um, Carolyn, please, Caroline, Peter. Hi. So. Firstly, I am very grateful to be here, and I would say that with my being here, I kind of feel that I have a duty to bring this up, and I want to make sure in detail, could you guys go into a little bit about kind of what provisions are being added for women with disabilities, because I do feel that very often they kind of get left behind in efforts that we're making, so I was just wondering if you guys could talk a little bit more about that and your plans regarding that specific community. Thank you very much. Um, I think there are, what's happened in terms of um, the agreed conclusions is obviously I think all, all uh, groups have really wanted to try to get language that's pertinent to their particular issues into the agreed conclusions, which is why they go from my like eight pages to 80. Um, and there's a lot of negotiations about that. And when we get, by the time we get to this stage, it seems that most new language is, is you know, uh, is being thrown out. So if, the, you know, the idea of uh, mental health or um, SRHR and military 
um, and anything, any um, mention of disability are not in the text. Now it's going to be very hard to get it in at this stage. Though of course, um, all organisations are, are trying to do that. In terms of disability in the UK, we have a very strong group who we, we always raise that with the UK. And so for example, the UK has given us um, a, a seat representing the UK in, in two of the interactive panels. And one of the presentations is going to be um, on disability. Um, and one of the issues that we had a discussion um, with the Bureau about uh, and with member states ongoing is lists. And one of the, the challenges with lists is that if you put in a list, you always miss people out. And that's why there's this whole discussion about um, all women and girls in all their diversity, all the men, women and girls, women and girls, whatever. And, and the challenge is that if you have a list afterwards, like there, there was a, an attempt in one of the revisions of adolescent young women, for example, adolescent girls, if you add a list, then you know you, you need to add everybody else. So for example, we'd be really keen to get marital status in as, as somebody who's an advocate for widows, for example. Um, other people want to get, you know, would like to see something else. And, and so there were two places in the document we said we could, we could get lists in. One was about data and one was about the implementation um, in the la latter sections. So yes, I think that everybody is very concerned to try to, to make sure that the voice of indigenous women, the voice of widows, the voice of uh, women with disability is in the document, but it's very difficult to get that in because they become like bargaining chips between member states. Well, if you put in disability, I want to put in marital status. And if you put in marital status, I want him to put in all their diversity. And then there are countries who don't want to have in all their diversity because they have different views about LGBTQI. And so it's, you know, it causes um, hassle. So sometimes member states just, just cut out all mentions of specific demographics. So yeah, we, I think we're all very concerned to try to get widows in and, you know, try to, have indigenous women and human rights defenders and and all the different uh, groups that we all we are all aware of are you know very very important. Um, Shayla then Daniela. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, good 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 all the goods to all of you. Um, thank you so so much for the opportunity. Uh, I was uh, looking for more language on uh, women in leadership and high decision making. I, we need boots on the ground, but we also need boots where the decisions are being made. Without a change in that, we will still be seeking incremental uh, uh, privileges. And th this should be a, a joint effort between all, all genders, all sectors, and at the decision-making level. I see we're still not getting that strong language. The other part that I was very disappointed in was not enough language about millennials and younger perspectives. And uh, this is something that I speak a lot about and we need to make sure going forward that we are bringing in the next generations to the table and not while not wait till their our age, but to do it now, 2030, the target for the SDGs is around the corner and the 2050 that COP26 uh, mentioned is too far away. Thank you. Daniela? Yes, I am very concerned that I completely, I, I see completely no language on the girl child. And after I finish, maybe Nina could elaborate the importance of having the girl child into the agreed conclusion. Uh, there is no language on the girl child. And that is important with respect to female genital mutilation, women, peace and security, human trafficking, um, forced marriage. So the girl child has completely disappeared. Nobody sees it anymore. And another major concern is and needs to be retained older women. I would like to remind everybody that older women are the women on which shoulders we are standing here today. And in particular for the past 50 years, it is them that created the opportunities for us to stand up and take sometimes our rights for granted. If we exclude older women, where we make the mention sparse into the agreed conclusions, do you know and understand that this means we leave them behind? In many countries, they are part of the majority of the population. 
COVID has been a tornado among older women in terms of poverty, in terms of healthcare, in terms of all kinds of issues. So we all have grandmothers, we all have mothers, and we exist and we are here today because of them. Understanding the importance of older women that they are not a disposable in the agreed conclusions. We need to be very conscious about the importance of older women in terms of language. And another point I would like to address is Marian, if you could kindly send me your um, recommendations on the military, I fully support and agree with that. We have language on that. And Linda Vitong is here, who I love very, very dearly, um, knows my issues with military and war. Um, we, could, we could definitely work on that and ensure that is part of the agreed conclusion. Thank you very much to all. I wonder if, um, I mean, obviously there are, there are lots of things coming up in the chat as well. I mean, there, there are lots of different groups that we want to see in the agreed conclusions. I think the most useful thing to do would be if anybody has actual text that they would like to see in the agreed conclusions and exactly where they want it to be. It's no good having a wish list. Oh, it would be nice if you had X in, in it. You, you've got to be very, very specific, exact text, <coughs> exactly where. And if you shared it with us, we can then compile it into one list and then we can send it around to everybody who we know has, has got um, members on delegations and they can do their best to kind of get the language in there. And, yeah. and, and as you know, it's, it's, got to, um, it's got to be referenced by agreed language. So if you can reference it or excite exactly the same language as in another place that has already been agreed, you're, it's more likely to get in. So although uh, it's unlikely to get any new language in, um, we can still try. So um, you send it to the Gmail address, North America, NA and E um, caucus at gmail.com. So um, I don't know if somebody can put it in the Ola or Daniel, if you can put it in the chat, um, or Nina in the um, chat, the email address, to, and then we can, people can send it to, to, to there. Um, it'd be good because we've got like half an hour left. It would be nice to, we need to spend time to discuss the statement that, meant, that Linda mentioned at the beginning. And it'd be nice to hear from Huri about the Vienna Cafe. But um, Anna, please, you have your hand up. Yes, I just wanted to uh, second what Daniela said. I think sometimes, you know, it becomes the flavor of the month, the wordage we use. And the girl child years ago was not left out of anything because you cannot talk about women unless you're preparing the girl child to step into womanhood, womanhood. So I don't think, you know, I think some of us slip up because we just assume that since that was a manifesto, let's say of UNICEF, and that we incorporated it for three, four or five years that we don't have to go back to the drawing table and, and fight for the language that made it in some rounds. So I think that we should just always have the, from the women, from the girl child to older women. And I, and I believe that if we're looking at violence against women, there's no way that we can possibly, possibly end it unless we end it violence against the girl child. They grow up not only to be victims of violence, but they, perpetuate violence because they've been traumatized by it. So I believe that we cannot afford to leave that out if we wanna see permanent change. And I thank you, Daniela, for raising that. I think one of the issues that we, when we raised this with the UK government, I don't know whether um, other people with, um, whether the US, Denmark and uh, Canada, I, I don't know anybody who's here with, with other delegations, maybe Marion with Germany, whether you've raised it as well, but, um, uh, well, we, we can try, but uh, they have uh, told us in Denmark that it's difficult now to come up with something uh, totally new. But of course, we can do that. And also, I think that Push. one of the things that we also discussed was um, why not why not have a 
pa a chapeau paragraph which accepted all the language from the previous agreed conclusions. Yeah. You don't have to do everything. And we thought that would be a, a way of making it quicker because the problem is you want to get like older women in or girls in or whether marital status in, but it's also got to be to do with the theme. And this is about climate change and, um, you know, uh, risk reduction and uh, so on. And, and so therefore it's got to be, it's got to be linked to that. Otherwise we'd be writing, you know, the Beijing platform for action every year. So, it we have you know it's got to be pertinent to the theme without losing these different groups and I think what member states are struggling with and what we are struggling with as well is how do you keep the agreed conclusions pertinent and therefore able for us to implement and to call our governments to account to make sure that we we say you signed this document now what are you going to do about it because you can get everything in a document here but if it's not implemented, if we don't call them to account when we go home, then it's useless. It just gathers dust until next year. Um, and so what they've said is that there is there's a mixture of feelings between member states. Some of them are interested to to try to hold on to agreed language, and some of them like to see a uh, an opportunity to move language. And of course, there is a there's this is also a challenge because if you try to move language on S SRHR, for example. The organizations who work in that field are really keen that organizations who are not working in that field don't mess things up, frankly, because we could come up with the best one in the world and say, OK, we want, we want to use X and Y language. And they've been very carefully working behind the scenes to try to get the language in that they're kind of working for. And we could just really mess, mess up all of their strategy. So I think we also have to be careful about um, these kind of areas like SRHR. But also in the areas of um, uh, all women, women in all their diversity, and mentions of LGBTQI, because when as soon as you mention all their diversity or LGBTQI, then you have um, huge problems with member states um, because you have a variety of concerns, and basically you 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 end up getting the you know maybe thrown away with the bathwater. They, they don't want to have that term in. So the, the stuff beforehand, you also get lost. So it's trying to be, it's trying to fight for well, better be in here. I'm off camera, I'm just listening. Uh, but at the same time, it's, um, uh, you know, how do we get this right to, to push forward for more robust language in general um, with much more language that's about, um, um, that it's in, it's in the member states are obliged to do X, Y, Z at the same time as trying to shift the language and make it more liberal year on year. And I think that's the challenge that all of us face working with member states. But um, yeah, as Ula said, if you sent it to the email that's been put in the, in, the, in the chat, we'll try to compile all of your different languages and we'll put it forward as, as best we can. Um, Susan, please. Susan O'Malley? Yes. Your or husband. Susan Lee. Yeah. Susan O'Malley, me. Susan okay. O'Malley, yeah. All right. Um, I want to speak. Um, first, I'm speaking about Rev 1. The one I have is 44 pages. Now, what's what I want to try to what is useful. I was with the German mission yesterday at their event, and I was one of the speakers. And so the first thing I did was to speak with the head negotiator from, um, from Germany, who is the um, person um, supervising the negotiations. And so um, let, my comments are a little random. Girl is mentioned many, many times, but not girl child, which is interesting. Um, let's see. Um, there's an amazing uh, passage uh, or a section on migration that I was, uh, uh, which I hadn't seen be in, in the previous one. Um, if you, I, I immediately talked to the, um, uh, the head negotiator about widows. Believe it or not, she ensured me that it will be in the document. When we had um, a meeting with Sovija Korax, who is the US chief um, negotiator, she also said that too. She's a woman um, with, uh, with disability who really, really pushes to include disability in the document. About precedent language, if you, 
the way we did uh, NGO CSW did our recommendations, there are also briefs that have precedent language on our, um, th and thanks to Linda Wittong, I see, thanks to Linda, you can go into our briefs our recommendations and then the briefs and you will see precedent language and most of the issues that we're concerned with all there ready for you to use. I had hoped member states would use it, but let's us use it. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, I, oh, what I really pushed was um, widows in inheritance um, and land ownership. And I also pushed that in terms of um, women, uh, women farmers. Um, anyway, that's quite random, but oh, finally, we have wonderful public delegates in the US mission. And if you want any of their, um, any of their emails, uh, I'll put my email in uh, the chat. Um, I can send you, uh, the, uh, for once we have public delegates who know something. Yeah, what are those oh, there's Minnie, she's one of them, yay. Um, so I think Devon's put the the advocacy tools in the chat, which is great. Um, yeah, so I think we I th it'd be really good to just with our 20 minutes left to spend maybe 10 minutes on the statement and then maybe 10 minutes at the end about the Vienna Cafe. So um, it just this was put at the beginning of the meeting. We haven't discussed it yet. So the idea that's been put forward is that we have um, a statement that is showing support for Ukrainian women. So without being against anything, but supporting, and this is one suggestion that's been put forward that we as a caucus could put forward language on that. And if we agreed that, then we maybe other caucuses would like to share with us. But as this is happening in Europe, it would be, it would be very remiss of us, would it not, that if we left CSW without, you know, as a civil society, that we just don't mention it at all. So um, if you can share your views on that, please, uh, for the next 10 minutes. Padmina, then Marion. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, thank you, Susan, for articulating um, the, something which is really crucial. And we definitely need to put in uh, women who have special needs. And I think the term determined people, it, it really is a great phrase which sums up what they're doing and especially also focus on migrant and refugee women and also internally displaced because as we know, there's a difference without getting too technical, but I think, you know, and thank you, Daniela and Linda for your very uh, precise comments, but this is really important. And if you, you know, I'm gonna put my email in the chat because anything send me, because when I have my briefing with the US State Department, like already, you know, I like I'm attending and make, making notes. I will uh, send this across to make sure, you know, we all have to push to see that what we want is included. So thank you so much, Madam Chair. Back to you. Thank you, Marion. Is this on this idea of the Ukrainian statement? Marion. Uh, yeah, one is on language. If I may add this, uh, we learned yesterday that international law has no um, provisions for victims of climate change as refugees or in any other form. So we have to also reach out to this. And um, I posted at the very beginning of our meeting here, uh, the letter of European Women's Lobby to the UN entities, Secretary General, UN Women, etc., cetera, Ms. Patton, et cetera. Um, and it is short, but uh, there are some issues you might uh, just uh, copy and paste. Um, we wanted to ask the UN Secretary General to have another town hall meeting only on Ukraine women or the uh, women in this world who are in uh, armed conflict and war to listen to them because we learned the General Assembly resolution has not one time mentioned UN Secretary, uh, Security Council resolution 1325. Uh, and the women from Georgia, but also Ukraine have warned years ago the UN many times in reference to 3025 at the framework, uh, but nobody has listened to them. Nobody has taken any measures for uh, prevention or uh, strengthening the women. The next issue is that we need a facilitation and finances for Ukraine women to build a negotiation team. And uh, it, because the negotiations now uh, have teams without only, with only men, and there are some other issues you might take up. 
Thank you very much. So yes, um, I don't know if there's, is there a link to the EWL statement, Marion, that you could put in the, in the chat? Or I maybe had to put the statement in the chat. I, shall I repeat it? I can repeat. Um, I also, um, I think that Mary Collins sent round to the caucus the whole statement, but maybe you can just resend it, Marion, put it in again, uh, send it to the caucus Gmail. Okay. Address. It'd be great. One, yes, one thing, um, everybody, that if you're not on the Google group for the caucus, Please just email the same email for the, the, the core group and we can add you to the list. Um, so uh, this is on the Ukrainian survey. Just be nice, maybe um, we can talk about in principle, just in principle. Uh, is everybody happy for us to do something? Can you indicate in some way, wave or do a reaction or something just so we can see? Or do you, there's nobody interested? Okay, interested, interested. Interested. Not many of us are interested, it seems. Yes. I'm not no. seeing. Can you just show reactions if you think it'd be a good idea for us to do something? Because we haven't interested. Okay. So far, it's under half, I think. Yeah. We need to, we need to, we, we have to have your, we need to have enough people from the group showing that they're interested in us to do something. Otherwise, we can't go ahead at all. What do you think, um, Hula? Do you think everybody? No, I, it's still not, still not very many. Um, but you also got people showing. I think it'd be really good if you can use your reaction button because we can we can uh, it's we can see more with the reaction button than we can if people wave on the screen. Sorry, can you repeat your question, please? Because I was just away for ten seconds. We're just asking that there is a suggestion that we as a corpus put some forward forward some kind of statement on Ukraine. And this would be um, a, a statement uh, of support for Ukrainian women. We haven't decided exactly what we'd put in it yet, but the idea is that we would do something. Otherwise, CSW will pass and we as a caucus would have just remained silent on the whole situation. So it's the idea. I think that we've Thank got- you, I agree. Thank you, yeah, Thank you. Zareen, electronically, people may not be able to raise their hands if they're on an iPhone or something like that. No, okay. I, think, I think they have got a hands turned off, but it looks like a large number are saying that. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So we've got the go ahead to do that. Thank you very much. You want to take down your hands. Fantastic. So now we're just going to talk on what we want to say in it and um, uh, how we're going to process it. So, Daniela, please, you had your hand up about this. Sorry, I was muted. Yes, I believe that this is an immediate and necessary action. And as all of you know me, I am a bit of a pragmatist. We are agents of peace and development. We also must remember the dreadful baited in blood history of Europe. And we must remember why we have all immigrated to Canada and the United States. As such, we need to have peaceful language. Mm -hmm. We must not incite, carry through and forward a negative path to war. We cannot afford the war. If we want to ensure women peace and security, we must be those agents of peace that will carry over. Anything that will endeavor war, it's not us, it's not our path. The sustainable peace we all seek against this sickness, illness of war that needs to be cured, it has to be done in a very wise, but strong and determined mm -hmm. language. We can't afford world, afford world War III, and we must move on towards peace and reconciliation of harmony, not just in Ukraine, but around the world. Look at all the suffering women in conflict. Yemen has been forgotten. Afghanistan has been forgotten. Libya has been forgotten, not to mention Syria. We are mm -hmm. all mothers and sisters. And what we want best for us, we must seek for others. I thank you for your understanding. I think the idea was to um, have something in support of, but I, one, when uh, there was a meeting of UN women with a, a, a small group of women from uh, around the world looking at kind of outcomes of CSW, 
one of the things that she raised in that meeting was mentioning all the other conflicts. And I think while if we are to do a statement, it should have that mention in it. So yes, we are supportive of the women in Ukraine, but we should say that we shouldn't, we, you know, that, that it's conflict as a whole that needs to be sorted. And this is an opportunity maybe for us to strengthen 1325 and, and call for it to be mentioned again, because, you know, absolutely, you know, what about our sisters in Yemen and Syria and Afghanistan and every every other place where there is conflict. Okay, we um, Gail, Mary Claude, Elizabeth, Linda, Shayla, Kay, Karen. I've got their hands up. So I'm uh, here. We go. Gail, James, do you want to speak on this subject or no? Okay, Mary Claude, do you want to speak on this subject or you have your hand up from something else? Uh, I, you no, know, I just wanted to say agreed. But of course, we we will have a language of peace, of course. But still, we have to do it from NGOs, it's very important, yeah. yes. Great, thank you very much. Michelle, did you want to say something? Um, I did write it in the chat, hello sisters, and my agreement is that we should put the message out and it should be one of peace, but we cannot just let it um, focus just on Ukraine. It needs to be all women who are caught up in conflict um, and make sure that, as yeah. we know, especially in Europe, we end up being um, kind of the front line of women and children who are escaping conflict. So I think that's uh, absolutely we should. Can I don't know how we do the drafting together. Okay, I think for that, for the practicalities, I think some of us will have to get together and do a quick draft and send it round for approval. Um, Linda McDonald, you had your name, I had I'm Shayla, you had your hand up? Yes, no. am I next? Yes. Uh, I, I wanted to, me next? Oh, right. Okay, Linda, you took a hand down. Okay, please go ahead. Oh, no, sorry, I didn't think I took it down. Um, oh, right. I uh, just I wanted to- see it, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to, um, really support. I'm so thrilled that we're agreeing to do something for women and in women and girls in Ukraine and of course all women and girls in in uh, conflict and uh, to stress the, uh, to stress how important it is to re recommend that uh, human trafficking uh, and exploitation rises in in time of conflict and never to forget. That's why we could bring the girls into and also pornography because a colleague of mine who's in Ukraine no, how, how the pornography of Ukrainian women has increased by the searching of Ukraine in, in Pornhub, but that just makes me sick, makes me sick. Yeah, we have um, friends who are in Ukraine and on the borders and, and are reporting back absolutely all of those issues that um, pimps are coming to the borders and inviting women to their, to their homes and so they're looking after them. And uh, you know the, the trafficking and the prostitution, the pornography and and surrogacy has all increased as a result. So yes, we, we're seeing very clearly which happens in every conflict. Shayla, Kay, Karen, and then uh, UNA Canada. And then we need to close. Yeah, Shayla, please. Uh, thank yes, thank you, Zareen. It's two two courses of action we need. One is to make our uh, wishes and our uh, perspectives known to decision makers. That means writing letters to our mission. And if there's a form letter that we as a caucus uh, can put together and each of us and share with all of us in here as a group and we can send it individually to our missions, making our uh, perspectives known. And the other, I mean, I like to see actual action. The other one is uh, to form some sort of coalition or reach out to the women in these uh, conflict stricken areas, including Ukraine, that we form a coalition that looks at these issues and tries to find peace and harmony and take us as women to that decision making table of peace. We need to talk peace, harmony, and ending conflict. So that's two pieces of action that I'd like to see. Okay, thank you very much. Just to, to say that we had been asked to have an update on the Vienna Cafe, and I want to leave time for that. So very briefly, please, everybody. Kay, Karen, UNA, and Daniela, very brief, please. Okay. You, you need to unmute, Kay. Sorry, I'll be brief. Um, I'd just like to see us using Security Council 1325 as the basis for our arguments because that applies worldwide and not just in the U Ukraine. Um, as you know, we've written a letter to our foreign secretary uh, about it. I'm happy to share the text of that with you if it would help. Thank you very much, yes. Okay, so in summary, we say we do want to do something. 
we want to have a basis on peace. We want to recognize all the other areas where there's conflict. And we want to mention 1325. Okay, Karen, UNA, Daniela, Karen. Yes, um, I listened to this and I agree with you, but we also have to consider the black people in the Ukraine that have lived there, people that cannot get out and nothing can be said or written without including women of all colors, and especially the black people that are being mistreated there. Thank you very much for that point. Thank mm -hmm. you. UNA and then Daniela, UNA, Canada. Thank you. Um, we just wanted to echo what everyone said um, and also emphasize that maybe there could be something along the lines of women and all their diversity to include uh, gender diverse folks in the statement. Um, and yeah, also also focusing on girls specifically as well and uh, girls and all their diversity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Daniela? Yeah, we have 1325 to use, but also 1325 2018, which goes up to, to 2025 that makes specific references with respect to helping women in post-conflict and how to address that. A reminder, we have the working group, which I chair on geopolitics and um, negotiations, strategy negotiations. I suggest that um, we work together with respect to forming the coalition with uh, regarding women in conflict. Um, we need to get prepared to ensure implementation of peace resolutions. Enough is enough. United Nations is losing credibility because States with veto rights, they invade, they invade democracies. And we, as agents of peace, have a responsibility through our coalition to ensure women peace and security. Thank you. And I think also we would want to work with the um, NGO um, group on 2025 as well. Absolutely. So, Absolutely, they are welcome to the table. So um, if that's okay with everybody, if we, um, the, uh, if the geopolitics working group drafts something or other along this statement and then shares it around to the caucus, we'll have to have a deadline and have to, we work on it very fast because we'll need to, um, uh, you know, get, get something out before the end of CSW. So we haven't got very I long. We'll work on something tonight. I mean, a bit later, I will send it to the working group members. And those of you who wants to join the working groups, please email me. I'll put my email here in the chat. Thank you. That's great. So if anybody wants to join the working group, um, we can take things forward. Okay, great. So there was just the other question. That's wonderful. We've achieved that. Fantastic. Um, something from our focus. That's a wonderful move forward. Um, just to go back to the question about the Vienna Cafe. So um, there was a meeting with the Bureau uh, some time ago about CSW and this idea was, was put forward about the need to have a virtual space. And UN Women asked the NGO um, CSW New York Committee to take this forward, which they've done uh, very well. Thank you very much, Huri and Devon, for doing that. Um, Huri and Devon, I don't know which one of you here, would you like to give a kind of a brief yes. update on the Vienna Cafe, please? Yes, can I just please recognize Karen Jordan had her hand up. Maybe I'll, we'll give her 10 seconds to Has say. She spoke already. Oh, oh, I'm okay. sorry. I spoke. All I spoke. right, good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm multitasking here. Well, Zaren, you basically mentioned um, exactly what happened and we were tasked. And actually I can't take too much credit because we have a team, Rosa, Jillian, Eleanor, Blomstorm and Karina from our office, not even Devin. So Devin and I have been just supporting from the sidelines and they've done an amazing job. As you know, we reached out to coalitions and asked them to recommend five, per coalition. And um, we've had a pretty good turnout. I must say, I'm a little disappointed that CSOs who confirm and then not show up really doesn't make us look good. Uh, member states tend to do that, but per, per group, I think member states have been showing up even more from their confirmations. Um, unfortunately, it's a lot of global North member states. There's a few global South. We don't have anybody from Africa. We've done as much outreach as possible. And I must say, if there's any success from member state side, 
it's because of the bureau. The, as most of you know, we have a really strong bureau who's working with civil society and it's their encouragement. And a little bit from UN Women, of course, we have to give them credit. They, they mentioned this in their meetings with member states and it's making them show up more than last year. Last year, as Daniela said, it, we really just organized something off the seat of our pants and we didn't even know the uh, Remo um, platform. And now, thanks to Jillian and a few other experts, we are experts almost. So yeah, it's going well. Um, I think, I mean, member states who are showing up love it so much, they wanna come each week, but it is difficult, right? I mean, just even for civil society, I understand why people confirm and then not are not able to come because there's so much competition. There's so many events happening. And sometimes I think we should limit these events. And then I decide, no, everybody needs a space and a voice. And there's, there's it seems like there's enough of us to actually occupy these spaces. So with a final word on Vienna Cafe, I must say I am very pleased with the results. We have at least five or six tables each time, one member state per table and five civil society. So the conversations has been going well. Susan is right, she made some comments in the uh, um, chat. You know, sometimes it's, you wonder how much you're, you're making a difference. But the most important part here is that we keep crying out for space on the table and we literally have created it. So there is space on the table. Let's not just play victim all the time. We are making a dent. This year, I think we, um, advocacy wise was our strongest year ever. The, 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 the test will be how does CSW end? Will there be vetoes? Will, will, will we be able to keep these recommendations? And I know member states took recommendations seriously and integrated it, especially youth recommendations. That's huge. We need to celebrate the successes that we have and not play the victim anymore. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jackie and then Ula, please. Very briefly, we've got two minutes left. Jacqueline Featherspoon. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. I just want to mention, um, I was with Club de Madrid the other day and um, the former president of Liberia, um, I recall she was at the launch of 1325 and I was there in the room. I recommend that we bring uh, a president like her, a woman whose country has gone through conflict um, and I think she would have some great ideas. So that's my recommendation, uh, bring in uh, former president of Liberia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ula. Ula. I just lower my hand. Uh, the only thing, well, I could add was uh, I attended um, yesterday evening and it went well, I think. Um, the only thing is, and that is only positive in a way also, that, for example, one of the ambassadors gave so long answers. So, you know, it was up to three more, four minutes. And, and uh, Huri, you remember there were some recommendations yesterday that we, we have to ask short, clear questions, but they also have to answer clear and short uh, if they can, as much as they can. Because I went to Israel, he's very nice, but you know, I, I gave up and went to um, I, uh, no, Ireland instead uh, because you know it was not possible to come in and ask questions. So that's only a comment from me. Oh, that, that, is, that is true negotiations, Ula. You really, yeah. and that's, that's the issue that we need to really keep addressing, right? How yes. do you negotiate where everyone is heard? And thank you so much for being there yesterday. I it think that great. we've come to the end of our time. So we're going to have to close now. Um, I know that the NGO um, New York, uh, NGO CSW New York needs this space. So we need to, we need to close. Thank you very much everybody for attending the caucus meeting. Uh, we look forward very much to seeing you next time. Next one is on Wednesday um, at 10 o'clock New York time, three o'clock UK time, four o'clock sets. So please do come along to that and we'll get on and do this statement. Daniela, was there something you wanted to say? Yes, I just once again like to reiterate everybody who is interested in the working group, do not message me privately. 
email me so we can get organized organized okay i will be so appreciative of this action i thank you all so much so thank you very much everybody for coming and look forward to i hope you have a wonderful we, we all hope that you have a wonderful csw that you're not maxed out that you're energized and enthused and it gives you power to carry on with the good work thank you very much everybody and see you next week thank, thank you, you so much bye everyone. thank you bye thank you so bye. much bye bye bye, bye. bye. Stay safe.